Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. Today we will learn how we can create a form to collect input data from users while defining an adaptive card extension for Microsoft Viva connections. In fact, in any quick view of an ACES that you create with SharePoint Framework, you can easily leverage the adaptive card syntax to define input fields and to define action submit buttons that will be used to collect information from users. On the code side of your quick view, you can simply implement the onAction method in order to get the data provided by the user and to store that data in a backend service or just inside the state of your adaptive card extension. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. So, here is the adaptive card extension in action. We can see that we have a button on the card view and by clicking on it we can see a form where we can provide three input arguments to define an hypothetical menu for a lunch or a dinner. So let's say that I want to get meat, I want to get an apple pie as the dessert and I want to drink beer because what else? Let me book my lunch and as you can see here I can collect the information provided in the previous form and I can process them or show them in the UI. How can we implement such kind of experience with adaptive card extensions and SPFX? Well, the adaptive card extension is a well-known one. We simply inherit from the base adaptive card extension like always. And from a state point of view, we uh, simply collect uh, the main course, the dessert, uh, and the beverages that we want to have. In the on init, we initialize the state like always, and we register one card view and a couple of quick views uh, in our navigation flow in the adaptive card extension. Then, in the card view, we simply show the quick view, so nothing special here, but the special part of the story is inside the quick view. In the quick view, we uh, define that uh, we want to use a specific JSON definition, like this one, in which we can define some input fields. So, for example, an input dot choice set, in which we will define that the ID of this field is main course, and the choices are meat, fish, and cheese. And as you can see, for every choice, I have a title and I have a value. The same applies for the other input choice set for the dessert. And the same applies as well for the beverages. Then we have an action.submit in the adaptive card definition. And this will be the submit button. And it will have a data section that will be posted back to the uh, code handling the submission of the form. And we will put back inside this data object, which is an open type, three properties, custom properties, which will be main course, dessert, and beverages, which will get the value of the input items that we have in our adaptive card definition. So main course dot value will be actually the selected value for the main course input field in this form. Then, back to the quick view code implementation, we have a non-action method that we uh, defined. And if the action that we get as an input of this on-action method is submit, meaning the button to submit the form, we simply set the state with the three properties that we can read from action.data, where this data property represents the data object that we are submitting right here in the action.submit. So really simple logic. We get the action, we get the data, and we get the properties submitted through the adaptive card definition in the JSON file. And then here we can use a backend service, we can just store the information in the state or whatever you like. Then in the confirm menu, we simply show in the uh, JSON of the adaptive card the uh, choices made by the user, so we read from the state the main course, the dessert, and the beverages, and we show them in the UI. In order to move from the current quick view to the next one to show the confirmation, we simply say this dot quick view navigator push, and we push the ID of the next quick view that we want to show. So really simple, and the key areas are the on action method as well as uh, the action submit with the data property and with the uh, value selected for every single input field. Like always, 
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.